Hi Facebook, how are you? It's Dr. Emily, founder of the Evidence Based Fitness Academy, podiatrist, human movement specialist, and uh, inventor of Nervosa Technology. So I want to take a few minutes to speak to you about the number one cause of why people walk with their feet turned out looking like a duck. You probably, you don't even have to be a movement specialist to notice that some people are walking with their feet turned out. Some people a little bit more exaggerated than others. Oftentimes people will go to the foot, to the ankle, blame it on that. That's of course one of the causes. And then a lot of other people will jump into the hips thinking that their hips are externally rotated and then that is leading the cause of the duck foot. When I'm talking about duck feet, I'm obviously talking about walking like this with your feet turned out. So when it comes to walking with your feet turned out, you as a practitioner, you even within yourself, if you're a um, patient consumer athlete that is listening to this, you always wanna ask yourself, is it something that is coming from my foot, from my knee, or from my hip? Now, when it comes from your foot or your ankle, oftentimes it means that you have very tight ankles, so you are trying to go around your ankle by pronating, and part of pronation is the abduction or the turning the foot out. Now that is a very common cause. However, you usually don't see just pronation by itself. You're also going to often see it with something that's contributing from the knee. I'm going to jump up and skip the knee and talk about the hip real quick. So when your hip is externally rotated, when we sit a lot, a lot of people don't sit in an anterior tilt, kind of like the way that I'm sitting right now. They often sit in a way that I'm not going to sit but they're going to tuck their pelvis under and then their legs drop to the side. So what they're doing is they're getting into a posture tilt and a externally rotated position. That combination of just having a sedentary lifestyle or driving a lot can start to keep the hips in an exaggerated external rotation position, which means that when you stand up, you get into that duck foot. I'm gonna drop the camera just a little bit to make sure that you guys can see my feet. And then, without dropping my camera, and then the most common cause, if it's not the ankle and it's not the hip, means that it is going to be your knee, which is going to be the focus of this video. It is called tibial femoral external rotation. So, with the tibial femoral external rotation, if you can see my leg, my femur, my leg, is staying stationary my lower leg is actually going to rotate. So if you can see, my femur did not move, but I'm moving my tibia relative to my femur. What this is doing is it is creating what's called tibial femoral external rotation. So if you see someone who is seated, and again, I'm gonna have to move the camera back a little bit. I apologize, I'm gonna totally ruin my setup here, is because I just wanna make sure you see my feet. Okay, so. Here, what you're going to see, I don't even know if you can't see my feet because there's so many comments on the bottom, but the knees are going to be facing forward and the feet are going to be out. So you're in an alignment like this. Knees forward, feet out. A lot of dancers get into this position. I used to be a gymnast, so I actually have tibial femoral external rotation from being on the balance beam. When you see that, if you see someone lying on their back and their femur is straight, the patella is facing forward, but then the foot is angled out to the side, just like I'm showing you here, that representation, right? That would mean that they have a structural tibial femoral external rotation. Anytime someone is standing, if you see them standing, and it's totally driving me crazy because I want you guys to see my feet. Sorry. Okay. Ah, the things we do for Facebook Live. Okay, so here, is that you're going to have knees forward, feet out. So when someone is squatting, they're actually gonna squat with their knees like this. This does not mean that they have a knee valgus. Knee valgus is a rotational transverse malalignment. When it comes to tibial femoral external rotation, there's not a valgus element to it. Sometimes you could have a valgus element to it, but it's actually much more of knee forward, foot out. So why this is important to understand this is if you told that client or that patient to bring their feet parallel, so you're saying, okay, we're doing squats today, or I'm gonna assess you in kind of a, a standard squat, feet parallel, 
what happens is that you can see it in my knees because I have tibial femoral axial rotation. You see how now my knees are going in. This is not knee valgus. I don't have knee valgus. What I have is tibial femoral external rotation. So when I stand in my neutral position, my knees are forward, but my feet are out. You tell me to make my feet parallel, my knees go in. So what I do as a correction, and you probably cue the correction, is to drive the knees out, all using the glutes and rotating this way. What that does, just immediately as soon as I do that, even just demoing that on this video, is I get shearing behind my patella. So it's actually one of the number one causes of chondromalacia patella. You will see this in a higher incident in women because of their Q angle as well. So taking and factoring the Q angle with perhaps a female that has tibial femoral external rotation and then forcing them into this parallel position, maybe they're a cyclist and they're clipped in in that parallel position and they're trying to keep those knees in line with the feet. That clearly is going to cause great stress and shearing to the kneecap, chondromalacia patella. I could also say patella femoral pain syndrome because that's a form of it, okay? So what happens when you see this? What happens in the way that you want to address this? If it's structural, you're probably not going to reverse it. But what it means is that you want to bring and introduce forces in the other direction. So if I'm constantly sitting in this position with my feet turned out, I want to make sure that I am doing exercises that introduce tibial femoral internal rotation. Why this is also important and where you can apply this, which is a great application, is any of your clients, patients, or anyone who's listening who has meniscus issues. So your meniscus, when you do this rotation of your knee, you're actually introducing stress and tension to your meniscus, which is great. The tension helps to make that meniscus stronger. So the three muscles that are often associated with an overactive ratibial femoral external rotation are going to be the lateral head of your gastroc, your bicep femoris, and then your IT band into your TFL. So part of your corrective would obviously be to release those muscles. Trigger point them, roll them, use your thumb, go to a practitioner. I don't care what you do, but release those three muscles, okay? And then what we need to do is we need to introduce tibial femoral internal rotation to it. So when we do the tibial femoral internal rotation, I really hope that you can see my foot. There's too many comments on the bottom for, you to, for me to see what's going on. So. I'm sitting in a chair or I'm on my knee in kind of a, a lunge or a 90-90 position with my knee bent. So in this position, my femur cannot move, so I'm gonna have to keep my femur still. My foot is on something that's taking away friction. If I imagine that there's a clock on the floor, so right now my foot is at 12 o'clock. If I move my foot from 12 o'clock over to two o'clock, I just created tibial femoral external rotation. I don't wanna do that in my case because I have to build from an external rotation. So I wanna to go to 12 o'clock, and then I'm gonna drag my foot, keeping it totally flat on the ground, not sickling it in any way. I don't wanna see the tibialis anterior tendon engaging. Go to, the stay straight here. This goes to 11 o'clock, and then goes back to 12. Go to 11 o'clock, and then back to 12. 11, and then back to 12. So I'm not trying to force it, I'm not trying to crank into as much tibial femoral internal rotation as I have because I don't have that much. I'm just introducing this movement and this position, okay? Nice and controlled, of course you wanna sit up, don't have a dog on your lap, and then you want to be engaging your pelvic floor, exhale when you go in, inhale out. Exhale to 11 o'clock, engage the pelvic floor, lift, exhale, and then back, okay? Second exercise that you can do, which is a continuation of this, is that I'm going to extend my leg straight up. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping it at 12, and then as I flex my knee, I'm gonna drag it into my 11 o'clock. My femur stays straight, and then I go back up to 12. So I do flexion 11 o'clock, extend 12 o'clock. Exhale 11 o'clock, engage the pelvic floor, perfect, and then inhale back out. Okay, so we're doing this. Okay, of course, if you have to build femoral internal rotation, you would be doing the opposite of everything that I say. This is where I would keep it. Now, if you have a client or an athlete that you just wanna have optimal knee alignment, maybe they stress their knees a lot, a lot of sports have different multi-direction, the knee is never in a perfect knee and foot alignment. What you can do is you can flex. So I'm coming in at 11 o'clock. And then as I extend, I'm gonna go out to two o'clock. So you can see that I'm almost doing like a figure eight and then I'm coming in and then I'm going back out. 
Okay, and then I can flip it. I can go out this way and then extend and then go out and then extend, okay? The knee is not moving, okay? So the, or sorry, the femur cannot move. You have to hold it here if necessary. And then you're doing this rotation, okay? So again, just to recap, tibial femoral external rotation. Why this is so important is that it's often missed. A lot of other practitioners are missing it. I just saw a patient yesterday who had a severe structural tibial femoral external rotation and he's a runner. Technically, I probably would, if you had that severe tibial femoral external rotation, I would say to choose another sport, choose another activity. Your body, your structure is just not designed for running. He also happened to have severe talonavicular joint subluxation in a rigid flat foot. He's going to have a lot of issues when you think of that alignment. So if you see duck foot turned out, don't jump, jump to the, don't just jump to the feet. Don't just jump to the hip. Think about what could possibly be happening from this perspective. And again, don't think of it just as knee does valgus varus, or you have genuverum, genuvelgum. You can also have tibial femoral internal rotation, tibial femoral external rotation. To learn more about how you can assess the foot and learn about all of this lower extremity anatomy and function from an integrated perspective, please check out ebfaglobal.com, all of our certifications. And if you're looking to get an outside the box perspective, please check out my practice website, which is dremilysplickle.com. I practice in New York City and I will hopefully see you soon. Take care, stay barefoot strong. I will see you soon.